Oh hey! Welcome back to Bedro Station. It's always a pleasure to welcome you back to my channel. I hope you're all well. I hope you're all enjoying the end of the summer because it's been a really hot summer here in London. So as you can imagine, no air conditions, carpet, you know, <laughs> it's been tough. Anyway, what I wanted to talk to you today was about uh, why you should download iOS 16. So if I've timed this right, then uh, by the time that this video is available, iOS 16 would have come out. Fingers crossed that my calculations are right because um, I record the video, then I have to edit the video, which takes days. So anyway, you don't want to hear about that. You want to hear more about the subject in hand, which is iOS 16, Apple's new update for iPhones, iPads, HomePods, and the Apple TV as well. And basically what Apple does is they release these updates first to developers, then to the public, but still as a beta. And then once everything is ready, everything has been fine tuned and any bugs sorted, then it gets available to the public. I was super excited about iOS 16. That's why I took part in the beta program to uh, see what was coming. And I've got to say the updates, they weren't buggy at all. I think my iPhone crashed once and it was just a case of uh, rebooting it. That's why I think that this uh, public release is safe in all, in, in all honesty. I've, I've never encountered any of the major updates having major issues. That being said as well, uh, updating is always important because of new uh, security threats. There's been a lot that's come out from Apple recently. That's why I always like to keep my phone up to date. And who doesn't like new features, right? So uh, let's get into um, why I think you should download uh, iOS 16 and its new features. So the first thing I'm gonna talk about is the lock screen. Now, um, I know this seems like a really basic feature, but it is super fun. And I also know that Android has had it for a while, but it's great that it's now available for uh, iPhones. But you'll have access to new uh, wallpapers, uh, which are more dynamic. Let's say for example, you've got the original fish wallpaper that was available for the iPhone one. So that's a nice bit of nostalgia as well. But you can um, access many different uh, wallpapers or even your own photos and the best thing is you can reposition those photos and what's nice is they provide a depth uh, effect on them which I'll go into shortly however they have different filters which kind of pulls the subject uh, out of the picture so you can create filters on the backgrounds as well change the font of the, the the clock and have different colors you can really go to town on customizing this one thing that I really like is that you can uh, place the subject in front of the clock slightly so it gives this kind of 3d effect you can also add widgets uh, to it as well so that means uh, you can uh, understand how you're getting on with closing your rings or if, uh, with weather updates but that to to warn you that will place you back in front of the clock if you've positioned it slightly so if you want to be positioned again um, behind the clock you have to turn the, the widgets off and the great thing about this update is that notifications now appear at the bottom of your lock screen. So then if you just tap on them, it will then expand them. So then, so the wallpaper that you choose um, can be unobscured by uh, notifications that you've received. So in iOS 16, you also have new focus features. Focus was brought in uh, with iOS 15, but now they're more dynamic. So if you create a new focus, uh, this targeted around a certain uh, activity you can select different people or different apps to um, only notify you during this time but the great thing is about iOS 16 is that you can set a certain uh, lock screen um, one that's more around that particular activity but also uh, your home screen as well so you can um, set a certain home screen with apps dedicated to that particular activity say for example a reading app and even if you've got an apple watch you can also set an apple watch face as well all tied to that particular focus which is great and we also have focus filters so within um, the mail app or messages uh, you can set that up 
uh, where it filters out uh, content based on that activity. Now this um, involves a lot of work from Siri in the background. I use a dedicated app for my work emails, for example, so I, I don't feel that I need to set up a filter on those. I do love the feature of uh, setting a focus where everything changes, if I'm working out or if I'm working, where everything is changed. The Messages app. So the Messages uh, app has received a lot of changes as well. Something that been, we've been waiting for for a long time is the ability to edit your own messages that you send. Once you send a message through the Messages app, you have the ability to edit messages within 15 minutes of sending. So if you want to correct something, you can uh, edit the message and the recipient will only see the edited version. You can even delete messages. If you sent something you really didn't want to send out, uh, you can unsend that message as, as well. And again, it has to be within uh, 15 minutes of originally sending it. Now, just a warning, if your friends have not updated to iOS 16, they're going to see everything. They're going to see the original message. They're going to see another message saying, showing the edited version. And even if you delete, they'll also see that as well. So it's something you might want to check if others have uh, updated to iOS 16 yet as well. Uh, it might just be worth waiting until you, you use this feature. But uh, I think it's a really useful feature um, and uh, once I'm very sure that everyone else has updated, uh, I, I might need to use it as well. And also there's new emojis as well. I really enjoy the emojis. I think they add a little bit of character because they look like you. I like to think mine looks like mine. But um, there's a lot of uh, new Memoji icons available now. And my favorite is this one. Next up, we've got the Health app. There's uh, a lot of new information within the Health app, including the opportunity to add any medications that you take. So the idea is that you can add those medications uh, in and it can you can set up a reminder to take those medications. Another useful feature is if you have to take a lot of medications, it will show you if there's any interactions as well. I haven't tested this, but I think this will be better for people that are a little bit older that have to take a certain medication. Now the Photos app has received uh, a lot of new features. First of all, we've got the iCloud shared photo library. So you can create an entire library that's shared between certain individuals, whether that's friends or family. Now the whole idea of this makes me nervous, um, but it depends on the types of, the types of photos uh, you've got. But the great thing is um, you can um, decide to share all your photos, just certain photos, or e even add your own as you go along. And that's a great feature for a family. You've been on a trip and you want to share all your photos there. So I think um, that's a really good idea. Another great new feature is uh, the ability to copy edits that you've made to a certain photo. So you can copy those same edits to multiple different photos. Um, you just simply go in, uh, make the edit, and then there's an option to copy edits, and then you can select all the photos that you want, um, and then paste those edits on them. And if you feel you want to reverse everything, you can simply um, select those photos um, that have been uh, edited, and then there's an option to undo the edits. So that's another, another great feature. Another amazing new feature is the hidden and recently deleted folders in your Photos app are now protected, whether that's by passcode, face ID, touch ID. I think this is amazing and so useful. So now anyone that's on your phone, if you've got nieces and nephews and they're moving around, they won't be able to go into those very private pictures. Another cute feature that uh, I love is the ability to copy the subject within uh, a picture. So when you hold down on uh, the subject within a picture, whether it's a dog or a person or whatnot, thanks to iOS 16, it crops the person with such fine detail as well, more than you could with uh, a manual way of cutting the person out. And you can share this with friends and family and you can paste uh, this selected area uh, in many different apps. I know at the moment, um, Instagram and WhatsApp, it just shows as the, the subject with a black background, but I'm sure they're gonna update soon now that this has come out. 
And finally for photos, we have live text in video. Now live text became available with iOS 15, where within pictures you can copy and select text that's within a certain picture, but now you can do so within videos as well. So that's another great advantage. The Home app has received a, a new interface for uh, iOS 16. It's now a more rich and infinite looking interface. You can access devices by different categories, whether it's security, cameras, sound, you can access them straight from the top. You can even reorganize things into different areas to make it uh, easier for you to access as well. I use the Home app a lot, uh, so this is a really nice and welcomed feature. The Mail app has received some great new and long-awaited features as well. We've got the search feature, which before was, to be honest, was um, so useless. Now it, it does exactly what you want. So you, you can search for items within um, the current mailbox or all mailboxes and it brings you all the results and it's much more efficient now. You can now undo send um, when sending an email. You can recall that email and uh, once you send it, you'll, be, you'll see that indicated with an undo send right at the bottom. So when you click on undo send, you can cancel sending that particular email. Now the default is set to 10 seconds, but you can change that to 20 or 30 seconds. And the whole premise of this is that it just delays sending anything for up to 30 seconds. So then um, if you need to uh, stop that email going out, uh, you can do so. You can disable this feature as well within the settings section. You can also uh, delay sending an email. So when you go to send that email, if you hold select the, the send button, you've got the opportunity to delay sending a certain email to a certain time and even days ahead. And finally, for the mail app, you have a remind me button. So if you've received an email, which you really wanna deal with, but you don't have time right now, if you swipe right, you see a new purple option, which says remind me, uh, and then it will appear in a new category in your mailbox. So uh, it will notify you when it's time to deal with that particular email. This is another great feature, which I really love. Another great feature, I mentioned this on my Instagram some time back, is the battery percentage indicator. Now you have the opportunity to uh, enter the battery percentage within the battery icon at the top right corner of your iPhone. You just go into the battery section of your settings and then you can enable battery percentage. It's a really cute thing which I thought I'd be really uh, anxious about um as soon as it gets low but uh, it's just a super nice feature which i really enjoy and finally but no means least is my favorite uh, new feature of ios 16 it sounds stupid but it, it really is my favorite because it changes the way i feel my phone is the haptic keyboard to enable this you just go into sound and haptics within the settings and then enable haptic keyboard and this means that while you're typing to a friend uh, or writing an email anything using the keyboard you have little haptic vibrations which um, it makes your phone feel much more 3D to yourself. It's, it's a weird sensation uh, I got used to really quick and now, and now if I use someone else's phone to type something, their phone feels dead to me. <laughs> but it's a great new feature, I really enjoy it, I recommend you try it. And it hasn't affected battery whatsoever, so I definitely recommend that. So there we go, those are the reasons why I think you should download iOS 16. That's just a handful of features, but I'll also include a link uh, within the description of this video which shows the full features of what's available. But uh, I recommend you do download it, it's got bug fixes, it's got new features, it's got emojis, it's got a haptic keyboard to make your iPhone come alive, so I definitely recommend it. But thank you very much. I'm really glad that you tuned in. I hope you enjoyed it and found it useful, which is more important. But uh, there we go. Take care.